Hi everybody! In this tutorial I'm going to introduce you to 3D modeling in AutoCAD. This is the first part. In this video I will talk about the different workspaces, visual styles, UCS coordinates, work with viewports in model space, basic techniques for drawing on a 3D perspective, and more. Let's start! When you install AutoCAD, it has by default three workspaces. The difference between them is the tabs and the icons that appear in the ribbon. To switch between them, I have to click in this wheel that says Workspace Switching. The first one, Drawing and Annotation, is the current one and we use it for drawing 2D. Then there are two workspaces for 3D drawing. I'm going to click on 3D modeling and as you see the ribbon has changed completely. There are lots of icons here. Alternatively, I can choose 3D basics. This one is a bit more simple. There are less icons on the panels and their placement is slightly different. However, I recommend you to use 3D modeling, because if one day you feel that the 3D basics gets limited for you, there is no need to learn a new ribbon again. Now, imagine I have this rectangle and I want to make a solid from it, adding a dimension on the Z axis. I'm going to hold the mouse wheel and at the same time hold the shift button. I can change the view to a 3D perspective. Then, I personally prefer to use the green mode. I can switch it on here. This helps me to understand the position of the XY plane. And don't forget to look to the directions indicated by the UCS coordinates. Now, I am going to show you how to convert this rectangle to a solid. I click on the icon press pull. It's this one here. The first thing I have to select a closed boundary. For example, if I place the pointer inside this rectangle, it becomes highlighted. I click with the left button. Then I can extrude this object up or down. If I want it up, I go on this direction and type the height, for example, 300. Let's continue. In the workspace, you can find these controls here. If I click on that one at the right, I can change the visual style. The first one is 2D wireframe. This is the standard view for 2D and it can get very confusing when we draw complex solids, as there is no perspective. The style conceptual has this appearance. The edges are emphasized, but it gives us a good perception of the solid. X-ray uses transparency on the surfaces. Then you can explore the other styles to understand which one you prefer. At the ribbon, there is also a tab here on the view panel to select the same view styles. Here you can understand better from the image. Viewpoints, UCS and ViewCube. In this section, I will talk about changing the viewpoints and drawing on the face of a solid. So, one essential tool you must have on the screen all the time is the UCS icon. It indicates the direction of the coordinates and the current XY plane, which is where the grid is located. I am going to draw lines in an empty space. By default, they are going to be located on the XY plane. If I rotate the workspace, you can notice it better. However, the line could also be on the Z axis, if I follow the polar tracking like here. or if I snap to a point which is not on that plane. 
Now let's talk about the coordinate system. The UCS here is in the original position when I created this file and this means it is at the word coordinate system, WCS. And this tab on the coordinates panel is set on word. Let's move now the UCS to another position. For example, here. Now the tab says unnamed and the Cartesian point 000, 000 change it to this place. To restore the original UCS position, click on the tab and select Word again. Did you notice it moved back to where it was before? Now I am going to click on this control to select different viewpoints. I choose, for example, Southwest Isometric. The workspace rotates together with the UCS to the isometric position indicated by the view cube. If you don't know, in geometry, an isometric projection is a view when the X, Y and Z axes have an angle of 120 degrees between them. On this menu again, apart from the isometric views, there are six standard orthographic views. Top, button, left, right, front and back. They are indicated by the view cube. I'm going to show you briefly how this works. If I click on left, the workspace shows the left plane. Instead, if I click on right, it's the plane on the hidden face, the workspace rotates in the counter direction. On the other hand, for the osographic views, the UCS is readjusted to have the standard X, Y axis. And in the tab named UCS Combo Control, shows right. Let's move the workspace using the mouse wheel and shift button. And you can notice that UCS is in a different position as it was before. To use the WCS, I change here to World. Now it's on the original position. In this example, I'm going to show you how to draw objects on the face of a solid. And this is the example I will perform. I'm going to move the UCS coordinates to this corner, placing it on this end point. Then, the face where I want to draw things has to be on the XY plane. For that, I can click on the Y axis and rotate it to a vertical position. I click in this end point as I want the axis in this direction. Now you can see here the XY plane. Then I have to draw a line at the distance of 150 from the end point. Hoof the pointer there. Move to the right. Type that value and press enter. Then draw a vertical line here with length 100. Finally, I can easily draw the square from this endpoint. It has a side measure of 100 and at the end I can erase this support line. Important tip for drawing on faces. Now we are at the word view style. I am going to draw a circle here and you can see this face turning blue. If I draw at this moment, the circle is going to be on the face and you can also see that the UCS rearranged it automatically. In fact, this happened because I have the dynamic UCS turned on. That icon, if it's not on the status bar, you can find it here. In this list, I can add and remove icons from the bar by ticking them. However, it doesn't mean these features are switched on or off. That's important to have in mind. I click on the dynamic UCS and it's going to appear here. And it's switched on. Now I'm going to click to deactivate it. Then I try to draw on the face. And as you see, it's not becoming highlighted anymore. The UCS is not changing and the objects I draw go to the XY plane. So, 
turn on or off the dynamic UCS according to your needs. Before finishing this video, I will introduce you to viewports on the model space. There are two ways to add them. I can go to the Visualize tab on the ribbon, then on this panel click on Viewport Configuration. As you see, there are several options for viewport displaying. I want to choose this one, 3 left. Another way, I can click here on Viewport Controls, then go to Viewport Configuration List and here you have the options. So, at this moment, what I have here is a kind of three different workspaces and in each of them I can activate different features in a way that it helps me during the work. This is very common for making 3D projects, especially if you are using a big screen on your PC. Switch from different workspaces. The current workspace is highlighted. I can zoom in or switch off a few icons at the status bar. And you can notice that the other workspaces don't change. Now I'm going to click on this part. This is the current viewport now and this time I can click in the controls to change the viewpoint or the visual style for example. The viewports can also be resizable, although you must keep in mind that they fill the entire workspace. Look at this situation. I click on the remaining viewport, I zoom in and imagine I want to change the UCS coordinates here. I want to select it but I can't because it's behind the command bar. In this case I can move its position or resize it. Example of using viewports in the workspace. The window on the left is my main one, so I want to have a 3D viewpoint there. The other two I can set up orthographic perspectives, for example, top and left. I click on the viewport there, then go to this control and change it to top. By the way, on the viewport below, I choose left. Let's draw a line on this face of the solid. Oh, it's better to turn on the dynamic UCS. Then, once highlighted the plane, I draw I can draw lines. And you can see them appearing on the window at the corner. So, you can try a few ways to figure out which one you prefer. You have reached the end of the part 1. To proceed to the second part, click on the card that appears above. Ok, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to Cat in Black if you haven't done it yet. Just click in the icon that is shown here. Also if you need online private lessons, you can send me an email to the address that I show you there. So it's everything and see you next time!